before we get into just what it's like to to be in Tampa as a hockey fan, anything you want to touch on? I mean, you, you already kind of laid it out. We've got our Frozen Four matchups. We kick <clears> it <throat> off with Minnesota against BU, which I'm sure there's no shortage of miracle references that people have mm-hmm. loaded up. We've then got Quinnipiac against Michigan. I mean, anything in particular, any storylines that you're most interested in or anything you want to discuss on any of the teams individually? Yeah, well, I'll start with Minnesota, right? I mean, coming off last year's loss, like a chance to come in with some of the guys decided they wanted to come back, partly for the purpose of giving another run at a, at a national championship. And so you have guys like Brock Faber, a uh, wild top prospect, who will be all will be playing his last collegiate game either on Thursday or Saturday, whether he's hoisting the trophy and then going to join the wild and Chicago or he loses on Thursday we don't know and Matt and Nyes with the Maple Leafs fans are all waiting to hear this is indeed his last couple collegiate games that can join them uh, before the playoffs so those are some storylines I think for Minnesota uh, been the stack team all year a favorite for most of the season see if they can kind of come through uh, Michigan you know has Fantilli he'll be probably the number two overall pick uh, in this year's draft uh, behind Connor Bedard but somewhat lucky teams gonna get him if they lose the lottery so to speak. Um, and they're just a team that's been looking for their first national title in a long time. I know I covered Michigan hockey when I was at school there. I got there in 1999. So they had won two national championships in, in three years before I got there. So I covered many frozen fours uh, in that time, including uh, when Minnesota was there. Um, so Michigan obviously is chasing some history there. Um, you know, Quinnipiac, Quinnip, sorry, I can't even pronounce it sometimes, uh, but they have Rob Brindamore's son, Skyler, uh, playing for them. And so I think I was texting with Brendan Moore the other day, and he's, he'll, be, he'll be sharing from afar because they play on Thursday and on Saturday, though. I like to think on Saturday, their 2, 12 p.m. game in Buffalo, you can get a, a private jet maybe to come down in the night game on, on Saturday if they do make it uh, to the championship game. So I think a lot of storylines in, in all facets of NHL prospects in each team, and um, I know there'll be some fans who buy tickets for both games and are disappointed that their team loses on Thursday, but then they can just party in Tampa for a weekend, make a vacation out of it. Hey, it's not a bad place to be. It's just a bad time maybe to be with uh, spring break and everything going on. Prices are a little different, but you you mentioned the the possibility there with, of course, we already kind of know that Faber's done after this year. People are waiting on pins and needles to see what Nyes does. And then Cooley has long been speculated by uh, Craig Morgan down in Arizona to basically be a lock to leave. And of course, fans not sure how they feel about that. And I don't know if you saw it, but after the, the uh, Fargo regional, mm-hmm. they interviewed some of the players interviewed Motsko, And he talked a little bit about a mistake that Cooley had made and just went on to say, I mean, the beauty is right. This guy's learning, he's getting better and better. And he's only going to do that much better next year for us. And like, everyone's reading into that. They're like, Oh my God, he's coming back. It's done. Yeah. Pretty sure that's just how Motsko talks about all the players, but uh, <laughs> I don't know. That'll be an interesting one to pay attention to as well, win or lose. I don't know if that impacts the decision he makes. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I think, I mean, Faber is definitely gone. Um, and, and there's probably questions with Nyes. I think people assume Nyes is leaving. And, and Cooley, I think, might be coming back the next, for the second year, next year. Um, but, you know, when, the team, when a player does win a championship and accomplishes the dream, that does give them a little more of a, incentive to say hey I did everything I could do in college might as well test my you know my talents at the next level and I know it is a very big motivator for other on the other spectrum if they don't come so close losing a title game to come back with your teammates who you have that close bond for you'll never have that college experience ever again so yeah that'll be one of the bigger storylines I think I'll like I'm sure it'll be tough for these guys to have their heads in many different directions from their families in town to fellow students and want to keep them keep them happy and also knowing in the, in the back of your mind your dream was you know, come and come to fruition. Another year, NHL dream could be there two days later. Why'd you play college hockey, Coxie? Yeah. <laughs> A lot <laughs> of Minnesota, Boston players here. Yeah. <laughs> it's so perfect. 